The fantasy behind the flexibility is evergreen. This is my attempt to shake that by analyzing the factors behind it. I'm going to answer this question. Should you stretch after the exercise? A common analogy to explain muscle flexibility is a rubber band. How much force you apply determines the length of the band. Once you suspend the force input, it will come back to the resting leg. The physical nature of a muscle flexibility is as simple as this. Okay, then physically muscle can be extended to its full length. But what if I am not letting it to expand? The flexibility is not just a matter of improving viscoelasticity of muscle. It requires power supply. Let's discuss the neurological aspect of flexibility. How many of you can touch your toe? How many of you can do a back bridge and a side split? No, I can't. So what determines this flexibility? Why some of us are more flexible and some of us are not? Your genetic factors and lifestyle demand come out of the cause. They are non-modifiable. Just think about the effect our body has received. Our body is simply bone levers tied up with muscle ropes which pulled and moved together in a coordinated manner by electrical pulses generated by the central nervous system and supplied by the chain of nervous tissues. To move a bone, you are switching on the muscle and contracting it by sending these electrical impulses. A muscle is made up of contractile proteins covered up with connective tissues. Eventually, they form tendons to attach the muscle with bones. The neural networks are innovated inside the muscle as well as tendon. What they are doing here is some important jobs. Just close your eyes and raise your arm randomly overhead. Can you feel where your hand is now exactly? This body awareness is because of this innovated specialized nerve cells in the muscles and connective tissues. Their other primary job is stretch reflex that helps you to create enough tension in the muscle to create a movement and to prevent it from tearing down by external forces. Now we are ready to discuss what happens in our joints when stretching. History was dominated by two stretching methods, dynamic and static. Dynamic included repetitive movements either for full range or at the end range alone. In last century, the usage of dynamic ballistic stretching as a stretching method for warm-up and to improve flexibility was high. At 60s, studies started to emerge which proposed the ballistic stretches as non-effective form of stretching in order to increase flexibility as it created stretch reflex which induces the muscle to resist the stretch. A good analogy for this is car seat belt. When the force applied is rapid, it will resist to extend and will prevent you from further damage. Thus, the place of dynamic stretches occupied by its static counterpart. Static includes holding the stretch at extreme range of motion using external assistance or self-effort. Later in the 90s, static stretch modality faced a problem. Again, many studies came out which indicated the negative impact of static stretches in performance. How does stretching impulse performance? By stretching a muscle, you are activating the stretch receptors in it, which send the message to spine region as a force is applied on muscle which may tear it so send you a reflexive signal in order to prevent any damage. But this is a reflex so there is no time to make this big text. Remember this reflex is important to create an effective movement. If the stretch is too intense or too long, this reflexive behavior of the muscle will be inhibited by another kind of stretch receptors in tendons. This shifts the impact to the passive structures and lengthens the muscle but at the cost of the muscle's ability to produce maximal force like before. If not counter-trained, it may affect your posture, balance and explosiveness. Thus, dynamic stretches again conquer the battle. But this time, not the ballistic, but the active form. Apart from the neural adaptations, one's ability to tolerate the amount of pain caused by the stretch also determines the flexibility. And psychologically, if you are tense and depressed, your fight or flight response gets activated and makes the muscle stiff. The reason stretching protocols include relaxation as an important factor is because they are codependent. So be relaxed during stretch, not this. Now the answer to the question, why you shouldn't stretch after exercise? I can see pre-workout stretches are somewhat demonized from majority minds, but still there is some soft corner towards post-workout stretch. Let's discuss this from the proponent's point of view. Why do they prefer to do stretches after exercise? If you find any stretch free, ask them, you will get a reply like this to avoid stiffness or soreness. Again, the fantasy of being relaxed, loose, highly stretchable give this kind of opinion. Because flexibility is highly sellable among idle people as they are stiff and believes stretching is the ideal way of coming out of all sort of stiffness associated body pains. 
I agree we have to be relaxed most of the time but not all the time. We saw the importance of stiffness in muscle to avoid injury and to produce maximal force. Even resistance training is the process of regulated stiffening by adding more muscle units, more collagen crosslinks and more neural drive. So trying to counteract these exercise efforts are pointless. Okay, so how about soreness? Soreness is a kind of discomfort or numbness in muscle what you are feeling the second day after your high volume session which prevents movement. Soreness is not just muscle fiber damage but also the damage of free nerve endings associated with the respective muscle. These damaged nerve endings send the signals to the spine regarding reducing the muscle strength and range of motion in order to prevent the muscles and joints from further movement, thus further damage. By disturbing this natural protective mechanism by forcing the muscle to stretch after the exercise, we are opening the gate to injury. A recent systematic review with meta-analysis of love and randomized control trials on the effects of post-exercise stretching on short-term and delayed recovery of strength levels, range of motion and muscle soreness results show that there is no any significant reduction in muscle soreness by the usage of post-exercise stretching protocols compared to passive recovery. So train appropriate load and volume, feed and rest well, give it time to recover. Still stretches can be included as part of your overall warm-up. Static stretches are comparatively working better for increasing range of motion. Dynamic stretches are working better in avoiding performance detriments. Researchers support this combination works well with both injury prevention and performance enhancement. So a pre-workout warm-up can be like this. What we have seen is just one part of flexibility. We didn't discuss many stretching methods even because I don't want to dump everything in the same video. There is more to discuss about flexibility in upcoming videos. If you don't want to miss that, just subscribe Sweat Instinct. See you in next video.